I went for a little walk after training, a steady state cardio walk, and I listened to a Tim Ferriss podcast with a guy called Neil Strauss, who wrote The Game. Okay. Yeah. So he's also, if I get this wrong, please don't hang me, he is a long-time journalist with Rolling Stone magazine. Okay. And has interviewed literally thousands of famous people. And he had a book out saying, the title of the book was something like, um, you only like me when I'm dead. Something like that. And I think it was based on an interview, interviews with a thousand very successful people, very famous people, iconic people in their fields. Mm. And he said the more successful they were, and he used, say, Chuck Berry, you know, the, the father of rock and roll as an example, uh, the more successful they were, the more they had a persecution complex that they thought they were misunderstood. Um, not quite getting the respect that they deserved. The, 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 the suggestion I got was not that they were entitled and pampered and wanted everybody to respect them for nothing, mm. just that they felt misunderstood and a little bit underappreciated. You are, in my opinion, unquestionably the most well-known strength coach in the world. Uh, I think our mutual detractors, because interestingly enough, mm -hmm. our, our detractors, we, we have shared detractors. Mm -hmm. it, it's, the, the, it's it's quite comical, to be honest with you. Um, we'll not buy into this and we'll laugh at these words. But for instance, I think if you, God forbid, were to pop your clogs tomorrow, mm -hmm. not pop your clogs, means right? Because yeah. English isn't okay, my one of my English isn't. Kill myself. No, just uh, die. Not necessarily something dramatic. Just Kick die. The just die. Kick the bucket. You would be more appreciated. You, you know, they might not call you. The, 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 I cannot see another word, uh, another phrase to describe you other than you know, at least the father of, you know, the father, the pioneer of modern strength training, because you've brought that. Mm -hmm. You you brought that to people. People who say that you haven't. I don't have to like you, these people. You're not bothered about them liking you. You really, no. really don't give a fuck if they like you. But do you feel that there's some truth in what I said there? Initially, when I saw haters, I took it personally. But then I realized it reflected on them. And then I heard an interview with Schwarzenegger, who said, the interviewer asked Schwarzenegger, when did you know you are uh, famous? And he said, the day I realized that people who never met me Hated me. Jealousy has to be earned. Yes, jealousy has to be earned. And then, so, I see a hatred every day around my name. People forward me the emails, the videos. And I only see it as a sign of them being successful. That's why I don't even, never debate them. You, you, but you, 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 you rise above it. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, I'm, you know, the people who know me know, I don't have much time for the elements of the fitness industry mm. that go out of the way just to start arguments mm. and, 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 and to be really defamatory is the only word actually. Um, so you rise above it. It has to get to you sometimes. When I see some of the shit that's written mutually about me and you, mm. and, and I get, I reckon I get a tenth of it, not even a tenth of it, maybe a twentieth of it, right? Mm. It doesn't bother me. I wouldn't run them over if I saw them in the car, mm -hmm. but nor would I piss on them and throw on fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but to have it relentlessly, to have it from people who've gone on your courses mm -hmm. and engaged with you and kissed your bottom, mm -hmm. this must get under your skin at times. It does, but it's a very short while because I constantly remind myself it's all about them, it's all about me. So the, and some of them I find actually quite comical because I know who they really are. And the thing is, is that you pointed out to me like a few years ago, you never see Rick, Richard Branson say, Donald Trump is an idiot. Mm -hmm. Successful people don't, don't have time or don't see the point of bashing others. Okay, but, but then some people watching this, 
a lot of people watching this now would be able to think of one or two successful people who fall into this evidence-based mm. camp, who spend an inordinate amount of their time, who are, who are, are on the surface successful, success is judged usually by social media following, but, mm. but genuine social media following, at least one of the people I'm thinking of, they spend half their time criticizing and attacking others, including attacking you, I'm not going to name names, yeah, you know, the sort of people, the person even I'm talking about. Yes, but who made them an expert, number one. Number two, forums. You, yeah. forums, usually, like internet forums. Okay, let's take an example, cluster training. Mm -hmm. In Jan February 2008, Journal of Applied, uh, the Journal of uh, Strength and Conditioning published a paper, Cluster Training, a Novel Approach to Develop Strength. Title similar to that. Novel, 2008, well, I was 14 years old. I was introduced through Carl Miller on cluster training. So you didn't invent cluster training? I, I never claim I did. Uh, I know you don't, but I'm, yeah, again, for the record. For yeah. the record, so, and then when that was published, I tried to see who, so the guy who taught it to me in 75 asked him, when did you learn it? He said 68, and then we, with a bit of free research, basically was around at least since 1964. Mm -hmm. Now, so the evidence in the literature came in 2008, but it was created in 64. So that's 36 years, right, to get to 2000, plus another mm -hmm. four. So it's 44 years, that's 11 Olympics. Mm -hmm. I don't know many successful coaches that have designed programs saying, I'm gonna wait 11 Olympics before I decide what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. So for example, Ivan Abajev with his vulgarization of, of training. There's no research paper what he did, but he revolutionized weightlifting. Uh, Orville Wright didn't have a pilot's license. So, you know, I am all for research, it's great. But if you look at real, what sports science research is, it's sports history. So they found out something that worked about four years ago. Yeah, they tell me it's good. I, I have a, I, I have an issue with the sports science PT related community mm. because I think the human body, I, I am not qualified enough. So this isn't me putting myself up on high at all. I don't think a trainer, unless he has a hard science background, mm. not a sports science background, mm. a hard science background, you know, and, and understands physics and biochemistry and how to put research together. I think they must struggle to properly interpret a lot of the research that comes out now. That's very true. The, the, the thing is, is that you can't deny that science is good, but the thing is, is that all the sets and rep studies, who do you have? 30 subjects from first year university, unmotivated, oh, they're doing it for 5% more on extra paper. You know, do they show up at the gym? I mean, there's so many. I mean, I remember being part of a study on interval training. And they came up with the results. Well, I can tell you that half the workouts were never done by the students. Here's the thing as well. When they do these studies, unless it's a test tube study, yeah. you're dealing with real people. Mm -hmm. Haven't you essentially had a lab for 25 years? When, when, when you were, because you had control, I mean, okay, you only had a lab on, on athletic, mm -hmm. athletic population. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it doesn't apply to mm. Joe Public, you know, mm. Mrs. Jones, who's 45, who's obese, it doesn't apply to her necessarily, right? No. But you had hundreds, if not, well, thousands, well, yeah. thousands of people who would pretty much slavishly follow your programs, mm. slavishly, as much mm. as anybody's going to get, mm. follow your diet programs. Mm -hmm. Isn't there an argument that that's... That's the same way that people do their research, isn't it? Yeah, because for example, you make a guy squat X amount of times a week. If he can't progress, then you say, okay, maybe I should be a bit less, or maybe less set, or increase this, increase that. So that's how. Uh, there are things that are universal that you cannot debate, and research will prove a thousand times. For mm -hmm. example, in biology, everything is explainable along continuum. So if you have fast twitch, you have slow twitch at the same, mm -hmm. and there's anything mm -hmm. 
Fifty Shades of Grey, mm -hmm. right? And then if you understand basic physiology, then you can make inferences mm -hmm. with training, and then that's how you build training. But you know, I'm not going to wait for a study to see should I do four sets or five sets. You try five sets for two workouts in a row, then they don't recover. Well, maybe if with that exercise, four sets is enough. That's and it's fluid, right? It's mm -hmm. fluid, isn't it? And it's why it can't properly be ever be science because six sets might be better mm -hmm. for person A, mm -hmm. and th and three sets might get the best result, you know, the optimal result with the person B, correct? Yeah, look at the number of Mr. Olympias we had. I don't think there's that many common things be between them except they lifted weights. You know, during the eight strings in a way, Schwarzer trains in a way, Larry Scott's in a certain way. They all train Well, does that mean anything? Does no. that mean genetics? Does that mean hypertrophy, steroids, genetics, and consistency of application of any sort of stimulus? Would work. For the consistency of stimulus, what you will find is that all these guys tweaked the system to what suited them, right? Do you think they tried? Did Dorian try volume training, really? No. Did he try Milos training, giant sets? No. No. Well, maybe. maybe and he's still Jack now. Yeah, but the thing is, maybe he figured out the. I'm sure he tried more than one set one day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, I'm pretty sure. I think that there's nine types of intelligence. One of them is kinesthetic intelligence. Mm -hmm. And what you find that the great athletes have is kinesthetic intelligence. So they'll say, this doesn't work for me. Do you think, looking at bodybuilding, because people watching this are more interested in hypertrophy rather than probably athleticism mm -hmm. in some ways, um, somebody disagreed with something I said on, I put out on Twitter. I basically put out something that you know, if you think steroids will make you Mr. Olympia, I, I, I should go and exfoliate and become a Victoria's Secret model. Correct. And you would agree with that entirely. I entirely. So you know, steroids, steroids do not. If nobody else was taking steroids, it'd be the same guys winning. No. If one person was taking steroids, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. You don't think so? For bodybuilding. Are you talking one person in the world? Yeah, one person saying, well, he, he's, he's going to have a good crack. He might not be the best bodybuilder in the world even then, but he'd probably have a good chance of growing the largest muscles. For him? He'd still grow. Of course he would grow, but I think that in bodybuilding, the most important thing is that you have to have chosen the right parents. I agree. I agree. Yeah, if the guy who happens to take the steroids and he takes a kilo a week, but he's born with calves that could clean a twenty-two caliber rifle, He's not going to make it. Mm -hmm. you know? So I think that uh, I always laugh when you see a physique of somebody on Facebook and you get the comment steroids. Well, I'm pretty sure the guy who made that comment, you could give him all Walgreens of steroids. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. I mean, you both know that. So yeah. um, it's a use as an excuse often because they don't have the work ethic to go to the gym and follow the, the nutrition. I mean, you take as much steroids as you want if you don't have enough feeding, it's not going to happen. Here's, right. here's a question for you. Lance Armstrong, all the rest of them were taken as well, right? Yes. Does that make him the greatest cyclist ever? From what I know from that circle, I know quite a few people who have been Tour de France. They said that the first time he showed up at some bike tournament, uh, he was basically on the bicycle you could buy at Walmart, and he still won. And people have said that work ethic-wise, there was nobody who could ever beat him. So, uh, because of the dilution factor of anabolic climate, Armstrong would have been Lauren Armstrong. Mm. 